Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. If you are worshiping with us by the live stream, know that we are delighted that you are with us, and you can download the worship folder at uh, spdlc.org slash live stream. Just a few announcements this morning. First of all, the pictorial directories are available, and you can pick those up uh, in the atrium uh, from Joan at the welcome desk there. Second, we invite you to look at music ministry opportunities for all ages on the front page of Partners in the Gospel. If you have been thinking about singing in a choir, we surely encourage you to just jump in. And adults, the Sanctuary Choir will be singing at this service regularly, also occasionally at the earlier service, all under the direction of Sam Grace, who is our new director of music ministry. Third, note that the Sunday morning worship schedule is changing. All three services will be 15 minutes earlier with church school at 9.30 and 10.45. And finally, my friends, our dear preacher this morning, Pastor Cheryl Matheson, feels absolutely fine. She does not have COVID, but she does have some laryngitis, which is very interesting for a preacher on a Sunday morning, I'm here to tell you. So say a little prayer for her during the sermon, and you might expect her to find a slightly lower register for her voice this morning, but all shall be well. Let's stand and have a moment of silence to prepare hearts and minds for worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, 
who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hand on her, he immediate, she immediately stood up straight and began to praise the Lord. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman a daughter of Abraham or Satan, bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. On that day, all she did was come to the synagogue 
where Jesus was teaching on the Sabbath. She went to church. Her intentions for showing up are unknown to us, but it doesn't appear that she came for any other reason than to worship. She came by herself. She was alone. No one interrupted Jesus to ask him to turn his attention toward her, to help her, or to cure her. No one spoke up on her behalf. She herself did nothing to draw any attention to herself. She did not ask for anything. She did not cry out. She didn't even speak. In fact, as far as the scriptures are concerned, she did nothing. Nothing at all to get Jesus to notice her. But notice her, he did. A woman bent over for 18 years from some unnamed ailment who came to church. Luke put it very simply, Jesus saw her. Right then and there, in the middle of his teaching, in the synagogue, on the Sabbath, the Lord saw her and took notice. Now, the Bible doesn't say what Jesus was teaching about. Maybe he was teaching about a psalm like the one you heard read just a moment ago. Maybe he was teaching about a passage from the book of Isaiah, like the one assigned for today where it says, refrain from trampling on the Sabbath. Or maybe he was teaching about the characteristics of the kingdom of God, as is suggested in the verse immediately following this gospel reading where it says, Jesus said, therefore... What is the kingdom of God like? And then he went on to paint a picture of a kingdom that is full of possibility. But in the end, it doesn't really matter what the topic of his teaching was because whatever it was, we know this to be true. When Jesus, who is the word of God, when he speaks... Things happen. People change and lives are transformed. It's like this. In the beginning, the word spoke. Let there be light. And just like that, there was. Let the waters be gathered in one place. And they were. Let us make human beings in our own image. Well... Here we are. The word of God is an active word, a living word, an effective word. Isaiah says it's a word that accomplishes its purpose. So whatever it was that Jesus was teaching about, one can be certain that it was going to change people's lives. And that it did. Jesus called to that one that he saw, and he said to her, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And then he laid his hands on her, and immediately she stood straight up and began praising God. I suppose that is what one does when one is, as C.S. Lewis says, surprised by joy. You stand up and praise God when unexpected, unmerited, unsolicited mercy pours down from heaven, washing you clean through and through. There's nothing else to do but raise your voice in song. Imagine the congregation in the synagogue that day. Imagine with me their stunned reaction as they witness the power of God unleashed right before their very eyes. 
I'm telling you, you can almost feel that same energy still today as they began, I am sure, to raise up their own voices to join hers, praising God and giving thanks. I wonder how many in attendance that day came with their own burdens, their own needs, their own trials. Aside from celebrating the miracle, did they begin to scramble from their places and to start to form a, a line right down the center aisle in hopes of Jesus speaking his word to them? Whatever they did, however they responded, we know this. The leader of the synagogue lost his mind. And he took control of the situation. He used his voice and his authority in an attempt to shut things down. He directed his remarks notably not to Jesus, but rather to his congregation, his people, saying, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. In other words, don't the rest of you get any ideas? Don't even think about it. There's an agenda, and there's a schedule, and being set free is not on it. Not today. You'll have to wait. There's no more healing today. Apparently, the leader had to repeat himself many times over in order to quiet down this now very enthusiastic crowd. The Bible says he kept saying, be patient. Just a little longer. You can come back another day. Come back another day. In his book, why We Can't Wait, Martin Luther King Jr. penned a response to criticism he received for his activities in Birmingham. To the eight white clergymen who had urged King to take a more restrained approach and to be more patient, he expressed his deep disappointment with those who, as he wrote, believe they can set a timetable for another man's freedom. Not on the Sabbath. Not today. And just like that, a worship event turned into a healing event, and then that turned into a controversy. Jesus responded to the leader, and he said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, bound for 18 long years, ought not she be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? In other words, is your animal more worthy of care than another human being? In other words, the Sabbath is meant to free you, not to bind you. So if not now, then when? In other words, we can't wait. We ought not to wait. We won't wait. And in other words, as the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians, now, now is the acceptable time for the day of salvation. Friends, I don't know what brought you here today, and I don't know what burdens you brought with you, but I do know this. 
God sees you. He sees what you struggle to carry. He sees your pain and your worry and your fear. He sees your guilt and your shame. The Lord God who created you and formed you and knit you together in your mother's womb, that God sees you, claims you, and has redeemed you. You have been set free. God's desire for you, for every single one of you, is nothing short of an abundant life, a life that is free from bondage to sin, a life that is free to love and serve others without restriction, without question, and without self-imposed limits. You've been set free, relieved of the weight of the burden you carry. May the freedom you received free you to reach out in compassion and love to those who know not what it means to be set free. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Help your people repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress, especially Brett, Bill, Carol, Chris, Leslie, Beverly, Jerry, Lauren, Bonnie, Peggy, and Julie. We pray that you would comfort the Rosine, Kolb, and Kozel families as they mourn. Merciful God, receive our prayer. May your loving arms be around the families of newborns Talia Mathurin and Russell Paulson and be with Kristen and Thomas as they prepare for their wedding. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest in you forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen.
Go in peace. Love your neighbor.